So orthostatic or postural hypotension is an excessive fall in blood pressure be, uh, that is uh, when an upright position is assumed. The consensus definition is a drop of 20 more than 20 millimeter mercury systolic or more than 10 millimeter mercury diastolic or both. Symptoms of faintness, lightheadedness, dizziness, confusion <coughs> or blurred vision occur within seconds to a few minutes of standing and resolve rapidly on lying down. Some patients experience falls, syncope, or even rarely generalized seizures. Orthostatic hypotension, I'm going to briefly refer this to uh, as OH, is a manifestation of abnormal BP regulation due to various conditions and not a specific disorder. Exercise or heavy meal may exacerbate symptoms and most other symptoms, let's remember, are associated uh, and uh, with related to the cause. I mean, they are in, in some way occurring due to the underlying cause. And OH has been associated with different mechanisms involved in CVD, starting from, I don't think this is taking up. Okay. Starting from cardiovas cardiovascular risk factors, including diabetes and hypertension, BP surges, uh, heart rate variability, left ventricular hypertrophy, diastolic dysfunction, atherothrombosis and inflammation, MI, strokes, atrial fibrillation, arrhythmias, heart failure, through to end stage heart disease uh, or cardiovascular death. And besides the cardiac uh, issues we noticed, there are certain extra cardiac disorders associated with CV autonomic dysfunction as represented by orthostatic hypotension. These include strokes, dementia, syncope, skull trauma, COPD, CKD, uh, orthostatic hypercoagulability, and fra fragility fractures. And uh, three types of OH have been described in literature. A neurogenic OH, which is the most debilitating and, uh, uh, and recurring condition. And primary autonomic degenerative disorders like Parkinson's disease, pure autonomic failure, multi-system atrophy, or peripheral autonomic disorders like immune-mediated neuropathies, inherited sensory autonomic neuropathies, inflammatory neuropathies, vitamin B12 deficiency, amyloid neuropathy, etc., are uh, contributing, and they are associated with a low systemic vascular resistance state. Uh, when we uh, come across cardiogenic OH, low uh, cardiac output do dominates, and uh, we, we are likely to encounter persons with chronic, chronotropic insufficiency, heart failure, hypertension, volume loss, secondary to uh, dehydration, hemorrhage, reduced fluid intake, venous pooling, and uh, amyloid cardiomyopathy. And then we have a mixed picture where both low cardiac output and low systemic vascular resistance will be encountered. Typically, this thing is uh, seen, this particular type of OH is seen in diabetes, in uh, CKD patients on dialysis, in amyloidosis, autoimmune diseases, aging, paraneoplastic syndromes, and uh, drug induced. So we'll be looking at a separate slide uh, regarding the drugs which can uh, aggravate OH. But at the bottom is, uh, unfortunately, this is not working, the marker. Risk factors and modifiers of OH onset or recurrence, very, very important list. So they include bed rest, inactivity, deconditioning, large and or high carbohydrate meals, alcohol drinking, hot environment, prolonged orthostatic stress, morning hours after walking, uh, initiation or intensification of antihypertensive treatment, and sleep disordered breathing. And this is a list of drugs that may cause or aggravate uh, orthostatic hypotension. It's an exhaustive list. Includes alpha blockers and uh, antihypertensives which, uh, under which diuretics, beta blockers, clonidine, long-acting CCBs have been implicated. Antipsychotics, MAO inhibitors, uh, narcotics like morphine, Parkinson's <coughs> disease treatment, including levodopa and bromocryptin. PDI-5 inhibitors, sildenafil, uh, tadalafil, and vardenafil. TCAs like amitriptyline, nortriptyline, and vasodilators like hydralazine and nitrates. So what happens when a person uh, you know, rapidly stands up from a uh, supine position, supine to active stand? 
and I would request all of you to have a good look. The red line uh, denotes heart rate, that is beats per minute, and uh, uh, the gray bar denotes blood pressure. So in the classical orthostatic hypotension, the heart rate is hardly affected, and within three minutes, the blood pressure falls. In delayed orthostatic hypotension, that is uh, B, uh, heart rate again is only marginally, if at all, affected, but there is a drop in blood pressure after three minutes of active standing. In initial orthostatic hypotension, within 15 seconds, both, there is a major drop of systolic blood pressure, almost to the tune of 40 millimeter or diastolic to the tune of 20 millimeter of mercury, and a small rise in uh, heart rate, which rapidly resolves within one minute, within uh, less than 60 seconds. And then we have vasovagal syncope. So after prodrome, there is a sudden drop in both the heart rate as, as well as uh, the blood pressure. And till remedial me measures are in place, this may continue and prove to be fatal occasionally. And the last differential diagnosis is uh, a postural tachycardia syndrome, POTS, where the heart rate increases by 30 beats a minute or more. And the, this condition is typically seen in uh, ladies 15 to 50 years of age, and uh, the blood pressure may not be impacted. It may occasionally be slightly elevated or may drop, but in general, it is not majorly affected. Then coming to the treatment of orthostatic hypotension, the first and foremost is to modify the patient's, review and modify the medication. So review of patient's medication, mainly antihypertensive agents, other vasoactive drugs and antidepressants is called for. And we may choose to discontinue, replace or reduce the dose. And lastly, we have to accept some higher levels of BP, especially in elderly frail subjects and don't pursue that uh, aggressively. And non-pharmacological interventions include rapid intake of around 500 ml of water without any additive drink, avoidance of triggers like rapid standing up, standing motionless, hot environments, large meals, and prolonged bed rest. And uh, it makes sense to increase water or salt intake throughout the day in such persons. Physical conditioning that is uh, some form of exercise, is uh, beneficial. Physical counter pressure maneuvers are important. Head up tilt more than 10 degrees during sleep. This basically avoids supine hypertension and corrects the orthostatic hypotension. Elastic stockings and abdominal binding. Then the pharmacological interventions include uh, <coughs> FDA approved drugs like midodrine, fludro, cortisone, and droxidopa. And less, um, uh, you know, established agents like pyridostigmine and atomoxetin, that is a norepinephrine uh, uptake, reuptake inhibitor. And then there are other agents which may use for comorbid conditions when we suspect such comorbid conditions to be contributing to OH. Uh, they include erythropoietin in case of anemia, desmopressin in case of nocturnal poly polyuria, this is available as a spray or as an oral agent, octreotide, uh, somatostatin analog for postprandial OH and acarbose again for some cases of postprandial OH and we can choose to combine therapies from this basket. Now a few slides uh, uh, pertaining to the tilt test. A tilt ta table test is a diagnostic procedure for patients with uh, syncope of unknown origin. Today a tilt table test is believed to reveal susceptibility to reflex hypotension rather than the cause of the syncope. A negative result tilt table test is characterized by a moderate increase in heart rate and the maintaining of the systolic blood pressure above 90 millimeter mercury without symptoms during the planned duration of the study. However, some other positives can be inferred uh, like uh, we can distinguish, we may pick up and distinguish between uh, initial orthostatic hypotension, classic <coughs> orthostatic hypotension, delayed orthostatic hypotension, and the POTS syndrome. And uh, patients may present chronotropic incompetence when their heart rate does not increase uh, more than five minutes above baseline values. 
Now I present uh, honorable chairpersons and all esteemed colleagues. I am going to present two cases from my humble clinical practice before I end up my presentation. The first one, a 61-year-old woman pre presented with a nine-year history of lightheadedness when standing still or cl after climbing stairs, which was relieved by sitting or lying down. She reported heat intolerance and urinary retention with occasional in incontinence beginning almost seven years earlier and this was managed uh, herself by intermittent self catheterization Her medical history otherwise was unremarkable and she was not taking any regular medications. Neurological examination was normal. Cardiac evaluation revealed mild chronotropic incompetence but no structural abnormalities. A tilt table test reproduced her typical symptoms within three minutes, co coinciding with a progressive decrease in blood pressure from a high of 159, 112 uh, supine to 85-71 when fully tilted, but only accompanied by a mild increase in heart rate from 62 beats per minute supine to 70 beats per minute tilted. So the severe orthostatic hypotension and mild increase in heart rate combined with reduced heart rate variability during deep breathing and absence of a blood pressure overshoot during the Valsalva maneuver confirmed neurogenic orthostatic hypotension. And uh, when we were conversing with her, we found that this smart lady uh, had a device for herself, some uh, counter maneuvers, including uh, you know, tensing of her abdominal and gluteal muscles, and this were proving uh, effective for her and uh, relieving her symptoms. Additionally, she used bolus water drinking in advance of triggers, like standing a uh, long, long time during social events, and taught herself to stand up gradually. She raised the he head of her bed 20% to reduce supine hypertension and improve orthostatic hypotension. And these are some physical counter uh, maneuvers which are likely to benefit all patients with orthostatic hypotension. They include crossing the legs, placing a foot on a chair or a stool, squatting when standing, and crossing the legs while seated. Over time, her lightheadedness worsened and treatment with fludrocortisone 0 0.05 milligram per day and midodrine 5 milligram three times per day was started. Although fludrocortisone was kept at a stable dose, she was allowed to uh, you know, manipulate her midoprene as needed as her symptoms varied, mild symptoms during winter while at home, but severe symptoms on hot summer days or when she was more physically active. And this is a, a, a recap of what I've already referred to. I'm not going to halt here, but it gives us the drug name, mode of action, and side effects. I come to my second case. A 72-year-old man was referred for a loop recorder, which is basically a, 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 you know, a small gadget which records our uh, rhythm and rate continuously. It can record up to three years long battery life. So uh, this particular uh, elderly citizen was referred for loop recorder to evaluate syncope. Syncope would occur only while standing, but uh, the timing was variable, often occurring after several minutes of standing. And luckily, the events were brief, lasting several seconds only, and there was a rapid recovery of, her, of his consciousness. And he was uh, suffering from Parkinson's disease and was on levodopa. His supine BP read 170.82, and heart rate uh, was at 70 beats, beats per minute. After standing for five minutes, the heart rate uh, remained the same, but the BP dropped to a low of 90 slash 50 millimeter mercury. And this is a schematic uh, presentation of the same phenomenon. Unfortunately, this is not working. It should be a, uh, anyway, uh, the supine hypertension on the left side of the cartoon, you can see the supine hypertension at baseline. And uh, fo following the head up tilt, there was HUT. There was a progressive hypertension without significant heart rate this is okay. This is there. Okay. Uh, change it. Uh, I'll have to hold both. So this is it. I was looking out for this. So basically, this is a systolic, diastolic, and the straight line is um, the heart rate. And uh, you can see supine hypertension at baseline. And following the HUT, there was progressive <coughs> hypertension without any significant heart rate response. 
and during strain phase of Valsalva on the uh, right side of the cartoon, uh, you, uh, the maneuver, there was significant drop in the blood pressure uh, with no associated increase in heart rate. Heart rate remained the same. So levodepa, we can suspect, might be contributing uh, to, in, to this patient's agony, but it was required for Parkinson's disease and we could not discontinue it. Dosing time, uh, we, were, we offered the patient midodrine 5 milligram um, I mean every four hourly, three times a day. And we kept the timing at 8 a.m. <laughs> Technology has its own vices and virtues. <laughs> Twice we are accidentally. <laughs> क्या करें? Okay. Okay. ठीक है. ठीक है. So we might be suspecting levodopa to be a culprit, but uh, we needed to con uh, continue with that medicine. And then we offered midodrine 5 milligram uh, every four hourly, three times a day. We chose 8 a.m., noon, and 4 p.m. as the timings to cover the active period. And this resulted in decreased syncope during follow-up. History, physical examination, and ECG are the only investigations for uh, syncope strongly recommended by guidelines. And syncope after prolonged standing, pre-syncope with stress and fatigue during recovery are, uh, thank you for that, are associated with vasovagal syncope. And there is a reference at the bottom. Uh, you can see the reference, 2017 reference. Uh, orthostatic vital signs are critical to identify neurogenic OH. And this is another important reference. Again, I believe this is a 2017 reference. And the authors had tested sit to stand test. And sit to stand assessment of orthostatic vitals can be used with drops of more than or equal to 15 slash 7 systolic diastolic millimeter mercury considered significant. So this is another important takeaway for all of us. Second last slide. So, uh, cardiovascular autonomic testing is the gold standard uh, for diagnosing NOH. And typical findings of NOH include when we do head up tilt, rapid and sustained uh, hypotension with lack of compensatory tachycardia. And when we, uh, you know, make the patient go for a Valsalva maneuver, progressive hypotension during sustained strain will be observed with a slow return to baseline blood pressure post-release without a blood pressure overshoot. So the learning points are that neurogenic orthostatic hypertension, which is a very common and lingering phenomenon, recurring phenomenon, can cause syncope. Diagnosing NOH requires an organized approach to history and physical examination. And measuring orthostatic vital signs is cost-effective and critical to diagnose neurogenic OH and all types of OH. Thank you very much for your patient hearing.